Hello everyone, Charles Watts here, the Arsenal correspondent. Go joining you on, uh, how do we describe this? Miserable, depressing, familiar Saturday morning after Arsenal started their season in disastrous, calamitous fashion yesterday, losing 2-0 at Brentford. Um, yeah, what a horrible night that was. First of all, apologies for any of you joined me on my attempted live stream before the game for the warm-ups and team news reaction. Brentford Wi-Fi was awful and uh, just couldn't handle it and it had to just totally froze and cut off. So apologies for any of you who were on that. Um, kind of set the tone that for the rest of the night, didn't it? It was just oh, it was just such a miserable night. Um not what you wanted, you go into a season full of optimism, or you try to. I know it's pretty hard of Arsenal this season because the summer hasn't exactly gone great. Pre-season was pretty rubbish. And that just followed on last night, and it was just a really, really poor performance. Yes, they dominated possession. Yes, they outshot Brentford, what, 22 shots to eight or something. But I think that's the most shots they've had without scoring a goal in the Premier League for ages, if not ever. But in truth, despite those stats that make it look like they dominated the game, they they absolutely didn't. Um, you know, Brentford had the best chances. Arsenal created next to nothing and never looked like they were going to score. And it was just same old, same old. I wrote, I wrote a piece on it last night. It went out on goal. If you haven't seen it, go and find it on my social channels. Just same, same new season, same old Arsenal. And it was. It was just shaky at the back, toothless going forward and just the same old story. And... You do really worry about the start of the season now. They, you know, this was a huge game for Arsenal, considering they got Chelsea next and then Manchester City. They needed to get something on the board here against Brentford. It was always going to be a tricky game, playing against newly promoted side. And they're pretty much their first real full game in that new stadium under the lights. It was always going to be a tough side, tough game. But just the way Arsenal approached it, you never thought they were going to win it. You just never thought they were going to win that game. As soon as they went behind as well, they were never coming back. They just weren't going to score because they don't create enough clear-cut chances. And, um, yeah, it's just it's it's difficult to be really optimistic at the moment, especially with those games coming up. And it's a really horrible way to start the season because you don't want to sound depressed. I don't want to come on here and just talk like this to you guys. No one really wants to hear it. You want to hear positivity and... You know, that things are looking good, that Arsenal are playing lovely football and it's exciting and it's great to be back. But, you know, that optimism before kickoff yesterday, the noise in the ground, it was brilliant to hear. The Arsenal away fans, it was great. And then suddenly the game started and it was just like, oh, here we go again. Just slow, pretty ponderous play. I mean, look, they did, yes, there was sort of not excuses, there was factors doing it, Aubameyang and Lacazette both missing out through illness, that's not ideal, losing your two top strikers to illness on the on the eve of the first game of the season, but as Arteta said, you can't use that as an excuse, and there were still players, you looked at that team and thought, you know, they, they can do something here, they can cause some problems, if anything, you had a little bit more movement and stuff in the, with Martinelli and Balogun starting, but it just didn't happen, and it was just really, really disappointing. I mean, Mikel said afterwards, look, it's been a very disappointing night. We needed to start in a very different way. The performance in the two halves was different. The first half, we had periods where we weren't ourselves. We got in trouble pretty easily in different ways with the long balls and the second balls. We were very disappointed with that. We reacted in the second half after going one nil down when the crowd was right behind and we created a lot of situations, but not enough threat or shots on target to win a football match. When you concede a goal from a long throw, it becomes a big task. I mean, the two goals to concede were awful for Arsenal. The first one just failed to clear their lines properly and then Callum Chambers didn't close the shot down but Leno got beaten at his near post and then the second one was just fast call. It was back to the old days under Arsene Wenger when Arsenal used to go to Stoke and suffer from the long throws week in, week out. It was just, no one dealt with it. I think it was probably a foul on Leno, I have to say. But even after that, no one dealt with a bouncing ball and it was just it was just really disappointing. It was classic Arsenal and just really thoroughly, thoroughly disappointing and... You know, you want to you want to take something into the Chelsea game next week and there's not much to take into that from what we saw last night. We don't know if Aubameyang and Lacazette are going to be back yet. And Mikel wasn't really too sure on that when he spoke about it after the game. So they might have to go with a very similar sort of lineup. You'd imagine Saka will certainly come back in um, next weekend from the start. I'm surprised he didn't start yesterday, but yeah, he'd only played about 20 minutes in pre-season. But you'd expect he would certainly come back into the starting lineup for Chelsea. But apart from that, it's not going to be too much difference yet yeah, you know Thomas Partey's not going to be back Gabriel's not going to be back so it's going to be very very similar for Arsenal and 
<laughs> you're playing against the European champions and probably going to be playing against Lukaku on his debut. So it's going to be really difficult. And then you go to Manchester City and suddenly you're looking at a very real prospect of Arsenal going into the first international break with no points from three games and most probably bottom of the Premier League. And so what next for Arteta? Where do you go from that? It's, you know, a season that was going to always going to be so, so crucial for Arsenal it's just going to get off to an absolute disastrous start and you're playing catch up and then you're under the increased pressure of, you know, scoreboard pressure, almost table pressure because you're always playing catch up. And, you know, it's a big, big challenge for Arteta to raise these players. And I think when you look at that team yesterday, certainly when I look at the team, when it harps back to the end of Emery, there was no, there's no fun. It doesn't look like anyone's having fun. And yes, you're going to, you're losing games there. You lost the game, so you're not going to be happy afterwards. But even before it, and I remember when David Luiz, was interviewed soon after Arteta arrived and after Emery had gone and he said the fun is back we're having fun again and that makes such a difference but suddenly now it almost feels like you're back towards the end of Emery era Arteta's miserable in his press conferences even before the game yesterday in his pre-match press conference just sets the tone immediately just on the defensive pretty miserable and that seems to be feeding through to the players and it, it's not it's really not an ideal situation for him for Arsenal and you know, one one ninety minutes in, and you're already beginning to feel like this could be quite a long season, and that's not how you want to feel at the start of the season. It's just, yeah, it's pretty depressing, and I apologise for the very downbeat nature of this video. I think when you look at that squad as well yesterday, it just feels so totally underprepared and mismatched, and that's a real issue as well. The, the summer has been a bit of a failure, you have to say. Seventy-five million pounds spent. I think Arsenal were worse off than they were at the end of last season because I think Ben White, I know he didn't have the greatest game yesterday, but I think Ben White's going to be a very good player. I think Sambi Lukonga is going to be a very, very good player. Um, and they're going to be good signings for Arsenal. But, you know, it was crying out for something new in the final third for Arsenal at this summer. You had to do something big, get in an attacking midfielder, get in a new striker, and they've just done nothing in that. And they just haven't fixed the clear, clear issues. You've got Bert Leno. No one's pressing Bert Leno, who is looking increasingly hapless with every game. No one's pressing him, putting any pressure on him, because there's no backup goalkeeper. How has that not been fixed yet? And it just feels like the summer's been a failure so far. Yes, there's a few weeks to go or two and a half weeks to go, but it should have been addressed a long, long time ago. You don't want to be playing catch-up in a Premier League season, and that's how it feels like Arsenal is. The squad just feels like a bit of a mess. You look at there was three right that You started with Callum Chambers. You had two right-backs on the bench yesterday, and then the substitute that came on for Callum Chambers was a left-back to play at right-back. It just sums it up, really. It's just the squad is a bit of a mismatch. There's so much work to do still. You've only got two and a half weeks left to the window, and it's it's you know, it's really one really worrying. You ask what's next for Arteta. He's going to be under incredible pressure if they lose these games against Chelsea and Manchester City, and quite rightly so. He's overseen this this summer with Edu. Yes, the technical director is a guy who gets the deal done, but Arteta is the manager now. He's not just a head coach. He's bang in that in that process. And Arsenal have gone into the season completely underprepared once again, like they always did seem to do. And they paid they paid the price yesterday. And you would think in a miraculous turnaround in form that we've seen no signs of it possibly coming they're going to pay the price for it against Chelsea and then Manchester City and ultimately after that then it's going to be Arteta who pays the price because only one person is going to get sacked midway through the season or in the early stages of the season it's not going to be the players it's going to be the manager so if he can't find a way of turning things around and getting his players improving and making them look like they're going to win a football match and he's ultimately going to pay the price for it and so you know that's what's that's what's next for Mikel, and he was asked after the game, you know, does that performance, is that going to prompt some real urgency in the transfer market now in the, in the coming weeks before the deadline? And he says, look, my focus is on the players that we have to make them play as well as possible and to get the best out of them, finding a way to win football matches and certainly the next one. Um, he was caught up after that. It was a bit of a non-answer, to be honest. And he was asked again, you know, yeah, but is this going to give you more urgency? And he said, we are clear of what we wanted to do, what our strengths are and where we can improve. I don't think today's performance shows anything different to what we've already seen. So again, he fudged the answer, really. Um, but the fact is, they are going to be active in the transfer market. They are going to try and get things done between now and the end of the window, because they have to. They simply have to. But it's just a shame that we're at this stage now, and they still haven't got it all sorted, because it just it reeks of a team and of a squad that is totally underprepared going into a new season. Martin Odegaard. That's beginning to heat up now. As we've said plenty of times, you know, he's always been the priority for Arsenal since the end of last season. If Madrid were going to show a willingness to sell Martin Odegaard, then he was going to be the priority. And that willingness has now arrived. Martin Odegaard wants to leave Real Madrid. Sources in Madrid I was talking to yesterday absolutely confirming this. Our reporter over in Madrid, Mario, 
um, you know, very close to that club. And the indications are now that they are willing to sell. Odegaard has indicated that he wants to leave. He's been left out of the squad to play, um, that have been registered to play against Alaves in Real Madrid's opener this season. Now, talks between Arsenal had been um between Arsenal and Madrid had been sort of not really progressing throughout the summer because they're waiting for a, the green light from Madrid really that green light has come now and we're going to see things accelerate over the next few days I would imagine when it comes to Martin Odegaard uh, it's not done yet anything you know but it's absolutely not done yet but it's beginning to look more and more likely that the attacking midfielder Arsenal will end the window with will be Martin Odegaard but as I said there's still stuff certainly stuff to sort out I mean he gets I've I know a lot of you want James Madison in, and I've said before, out of the two of them, I'd probably pick Madison, but I'm certainly not going to turn my nose up at Martin Odegaard. He's 22. He made a big impression last season in just six months, which was more impressive considering he came in when the club was in an absolute mess, really, and the team was in a mess. He played a big part in the improvement Arsenal made in the second half of last season. Yes, he can, needs to score more goals. Yes, he needs to you know set up more goals, but you know he's 22. He was only here for six months on loan last season. I think his ceiling's incredibly high um, and I think it'll be a great signing for Arsenal if they if they get it done. Yes, I probably would have preferred Madison, but I'm like I said, I'm not going to turn my nose up at Martin Odegaard. He knows how Arsenal w- want to play. He knows the players. He doesn't. He's not going to take any time to adjust um, and he proved last season that he can make a difference when he's playing well. Um, so I think Martin Odegaard would be a fine, fine signing for Arsenal if they get it done. It's probably looking like between 40 and 50 million euros, hopefully nearer 40 million euros to get that one done. And like I said, I think Arsenal will be bringing in a very young, talented player with lots of room for improvement who is only going to add to the team and add to the add to helping things going forward. And they need it desperately because other than Smith Rowe, I know Saka came on yesterday, but Saka's obviously a little bit short in terms of fitness. But other than Smith Rowe, there's just no no one was going to make anything happen yesterday. I thought Smith Rowe was excellent. I thought he was really, really good. Everything good that Arsenal did yesterday was through Smith Rowe. He was the only player looking to get the ball on the half turn and drive forward and make something happen. You know, Brentford struggled to deal with him. It's just a shame that no one else was any, on anywhere near his level in the Arsenal team yesterday. I thought it was absolutely great. And, um, you know, the one shining light to come from last night's performance was uh, was Smith Rowe, because uh, I thought I thought he was excellent. And just another example of how good he is and how important it was to get that contract sorted for him. Because if Arsenal are going to have even a remotely decent season this season, then you would think certainly Smith Rowe and Saka are going to be absolutely essential to that. Um just before I get onto my player ratings from last night, just uh, obviously Joe Willock, that move was done and dusted yesterday, wrapped up and confirmed as expected. He's moved to Newcastle for around 25 million. The initial fee isn't that high as 25 million, but that's how what it will eventually reach with certain add-ons. Whether it, I've said it before, whether this turns out to be one Arsenal lift regret, when it, only Willock can really. Um, only what Willock goes on to achieve at Newcastle will really show that. If he goes on and add, as an absolute blinder, scores the sort of goals he scored at the end of last season on a regular basis, then it's one that Arsenal are probably going to live to regret. But if he goes the other way and he doesn't quite, can't continue that sort of high level that he set towards the end of last season, then uh, you'd think 25 million for a young academy project who wasn't going to be playing for Arsenal um, really is a is a decent deal. So good luck to Joe Willock. I hope he goes on and, do, and does really well. But um, I thought it was a hard one for Arsenal to turn down this summer, to be honest. Okay, final one from me. Again, apologies, this video has been depressing. Um, my player ratings from last night for any of you that care. Um, Bert Leno, poor, as I said earlier, looking increasingly hapless. Got absolutely no pressure on him for the first team spot at Arsenal. That can't be good for anyone. Uh, three for Bert Leno. He made a couple of good saves, to be fair to him, but I thought both goals were... Uh, he was certainly at error for the first one, getting beaten his near post. Can't let that happen, even though Callum Chambers was equally at fault, I thought. And then second goal potentially was a foul, but it was absolutely bullied off the ball. If that was Emi Martinez uh, or Jens Lehmann or someone like that, there's no way they would have been bullied like that for at the near post for that long throw. Callum Chambers, I'm going to give a 4-2. Didn't do too much for me. Uh, as I said, I thought it was a, he was at fault for the first goal as well. He didn't shut. It was poor clearance initially, then he didn't shut the guy down. Um so he gets a four from me. I'm going to give Ben White a four as well. Um, not the best of debuts from Ben White, but um, hard to get thrown into a mess like that at the back. Pablo Mari had a shocker. I thought um, I quite like Pablo Mari. Well, I did last season, but I thought <laughs> the last couple of games he looked absolutely bang average, and he certainly looked bang average last night. Really disappointing from him. He gets a three from me. Kieran Tierney gets a six 
thought Tierney was one of the few Arsenal players that sort of stood out last night, especially in the second half. I thought he he, he got into some decent positions, was always willing, never gave up, and he gets a six. Granite Xhaka, I'm going to give a five. Sambi Lekonga, I'm going to give a six. I thought Lekonga was pretty decent when he was on the pitch. Again, you know, very young Premier League debut. Tough one for him to be thrown into, but I thought he stood up pretty well and, um, you know, pretty... Uh, a decent enough debut from Lekonga in difficult circumstances so I'm going to give him a 6 Smith Rowe man of the match for me gets a 7 like I said I uh, thought he was excellent Pepe disappointing just you know without Lacazette and Bamiang you were hoping he might be able to step up and um, sort of fill the void left by those two but he didn't he gets a 4 Balogun and Martinelli both get a 3 for me tough night for Balogun real sort of eye opener for him about what it's like to lead the line at senior level um, Martinelli straight back in after pretty much no training after his trip to the Olympics with Brazil. Just never in the game at all. He gets three. Not really going to rate the subs because they didn't make too much of a difference. I thought Saka was quite bright when he came on. Out of all of them, he was the brightest. But um, other than that, they just couldn't really make an impact. All right. Sorry, I'm thoroughly depressed now after that. And I'm sure you're probably thoroughly depressed after watching it. I do apologise, but it was tough to really find the positives about Arsenal this morning. I am off work now for the next week. I'm back for the Chelsea. I will be at the Chelsea game. Maybe doing something a little bit different from the Chelsea game than my usual reporting. So keep an eye out for that. But I am off this week. I'm going to try and do a couple of videos if I can. I'm not going away apart from on Wednesday and Thursday. Um, so I can, if I get the time, I'll try and do a couple of videos just to keep in touch with what's going on. But until then, everyone, try and put last night to bed. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. I'll speak to you very soon.